My name is Freshly Mamburi from Kenya. John Katana is my name, band leader, The Mushrooms. Hi, my name is Eric Wainaina, and you're listening to KBC English Service. Hi, I'm Fito Dera, and you're listening to Kenyan Artist, right here on KBC. What's up, this is Nameless. And this is Wahoo, and we are the, the M's. The M's, baby. This is Awilo Mike of Jamnazi Africa Band on Kenyan Artists on KBC. Hey, what's going on, people? This is Wyatt the Lion. I'm hanging out with Jonah Bongo Jr. on the Kenyan Artist Show. Keep it right here, KBC English Service. Live set up. Respect. From Benga to Rumba, Kapuka to Genge, Gospel to Afrofusion, Jonah Bongo Jr. speaks to the most influential Kenyan artists on KBC English Service. Hope you started the new year well. Hello and welcome to the Kenyan Artist Program. Louis Mutua on the controls. We have a special Kenyan artist uh, based in the UK, hosting him is Jane Opondo. Good afternoon, guys. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. And you know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the show Kenyan Artist with your host, Jane Opondo. The guest of today is musical genius and rumba star, Sham Shah, known as Shama. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Who would you say Sham Shah is? Where do you come from? What's your family background? And where did you go to school? Thanks for having me on the show again. So first and foremost, Sham Shah is a human being. I'm a musician who goes by the name of Shama. Uh, and in music, I'm mainly a performer. So I play guitar, I sing. Uh, I used to be a band leader. I'm also a producer. So I write, arrange um, and compose music. And I'm also a music teacher. Um, I'm actually from Kenya. So I grew up in Nairobi, but I was born in London and moved to Kenya when I was very young. And my family is from Gujarat. So we're, I'm the fourth or fifth generation born in Kenya. Um, growing up in Nairobi, I was very lucky. I went to international school, so I was exposed to a lot of different culture. And our like primary school was very musical, so it really helped me get further in my career. Wow, those are quite a number of musical titles. Very impressive. How old were you when you realized that you were made for music? So I was actually quite lucky that when I moved to Kenya, when I was four years old, um, I got exposed to music lessons. So my cousin was playing piano. I tagged along. I started doing piano lessons and our Primary school, as I said, was very musical. So all of us sang in the choir. We played in orchestra. Everyone had to play uh, one or two instruments and so on. So I was fully immersed, immersed in the music culture. And when I was about 10 years old, I decided, you know, I, I want to be a musician. And so, I, I, you know, I, I told my parents, I told people that, you know, I'm going to be a musician. And of course, because you're so young, people say, yeah, yeah, whatever. And expect, you know, you change your mind and so on. But for me, yeah, I stuck to it. And from when I was 10 years old... I made the decision by the time I was 15, I was already working professionally in music. So I was already teaching, performing and so on, uh, recording music. And at 17, I actually dropped out of high school to do music full time. So I, I taught music full time. After that, it switched more into performing with Masika Africa, the band I founded. Um, and now, you know, 10 years have gone by and I was, I'm still working in music. That must have been really challenging for you. I mean, putting music first before everything. And uh, coming from an Asian British background, how did you end up singing and playing rumba? So that's quite an interesting question. Um, of course, you know, people we say we're Asian, Kenyan or, you know, British, Asian, Kenyan and so on. But growing up in Nairobi, you know, you you're fully immersed in all the culture that's there. So, of course, we have the Asian side of it at home. But at the same time, we are very Kenyan. And then going to international school, you're also exposed to, like, Western culture. So it's it's an interesting mix. As much as, like, you know, I may look a certain way, I, I just, in the end, I consider myself a person. But, yeah, so I had a guitar teacher called Manasse Uzele when I moved into high school. And uh, he's of Congolese descent. And, of course, it was a very, like, well-rounded and holistic music training and guitar training. And so I was exposed to many different genres. And I remember at one point, you know he brought this song to me called Mario by Franco and taught it to me and I instantly got like very interested in the style of music because at the time I was playing more reggae but I was getting bored of it because it wasn't challenging me so I discovered you know rumba guitar Congolese style guitar and benga style guitar and you know I went and I went into all the catalogs of music you know listening to Les Wanika, Franco everything related to that and yeah so it, it you know it captivated me. The Congolese are incredible guitarists, incredible singers, and, you know, 
it's a music which unified part, most of sub-Saharan Africa. I'm sure he must have been really proud of you, you know, to see how far you've come in terms of learning, understanding, and now creating your own music in rumba. Tell me, what was the response like from your family? <laughs> so the the response from like family was quite complicated. Of course, um, you know, as as kids, we were exposed to a lot of different things, extracurricular things, but. I don't think any of our parents expected we would do them full time. It was more like, you know, do them so you can learn more. And of course, it's good for brain development and so on when you're young. So when I decided to actually be a musician full time, I think a lot of people were trying to discourage me and, you know, like get my head out of it. So I do a sensible job like, you know, business or become a doctor or a lawyer or something. But I'm also very stubborn and I'm very lucky that my mom always supported me and said, you know, do what it is what you want to do. And especially, you know, coming from our background where we're well educated and, you know, you're expected to go off to uni overseas and you'll come back and either get a really good job or enter family business or so on. It became very complicated when I dropped out of school. And so a lot of time was spent, you know, fighting with people who were trying to discourage you and so on. And of course they meant well, but eventually, you know, um, I was lucky because I was very stubborn. And so in the end, I just pulled through. And when I started succeeding and, you know, getting the media coverage and earning a good living from music, people kind of backed off and they started realizing that there is more paths in life, professional paths in life than, you know, what is expected. You have quite the backbone there. I mean, going against everybody's expectations of you and creating your own identity through chaos. That takes real courage, like props. And uh, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? What are some of the musical influences you had? So as I said, like growing up, we were almost between uh, in an intersection between different cultures. So there's of course the whole western british international school side there's the asian side at home and then of course being in kenya there's all the kenyan side and i think you know there's a lot of variety in music in kenya so of course going to school was very like classical music uh christian music on the radio you hear a lot of like reggae you know um r&b hip-hop uh and you know friends would be listening to like pop music rock and so on. And so, you know, we, we were exposed to so many different styles of music. And, you know, when you go around Nairobi on the streets, you'll hear benga everywhere, you hear rumba everywhere. And so it was something I was familiar with, but it wasn't something I actually went and listened to until I was introduced to it and taught it properly. So, yeah, like growing up, we had all of those different influences. And of course, once I dif- discovered the African side, um, I went and, you know, I dug very deep. And so with all the Congolese music, all the way starting from the beginning, from the 50s, with like, you know, Grand Calais, Franco, um, Wendo, Kolosoy, and you know, all these people. And then, you know, the Tanzanian bands, the East African bands. And then from that, of course, you know, there's the link into Cuban music and salsa and so on. So I went and explored all of that. And I even went to Cuba and studied music there. And it was very, yeah, it's been a very interesting journey. There's a lot of depth in world music, what people call world music, and especially within African and Latin music. Earlier, you mentioned that you founded the band Orchestra Masika Africa. Could you tell me a little bit about how this came about? So with Masika Africa, I remember in 2015, I went for a wedding in UK, in London. And I would ask people like, do you know, have, what do you know about African music? Or do you know African music? And people would always say, yes, yes, I know. And the example they'll always come up with was like Fela Kuti and other Afrobeat and high life musicians. And I found this really strange because, you know, back in East Africa, rumba is the sound of the continent. Congolese sound, um, Swahili sound, what people call Lingala and so on. And so it was, I found it very strange that people overseas hadn't really heard this music. And of course, you know, when you come back home, you start to realize that most of that generation of musicians are now gone. No one has replaced them. People have kind of gone off in a more Western direction. And so in 2015, I was in London. I came back and I had actually decided to move to London permanently the next year. And in between that, I got a contract to play a show in the coast for New Year's. And so I put a band together. And as part of the band, like, you know, learning repertoire, we decided to get a contract in Nairobi just to, you know, brush up and learn everything and make some money in the meantime. And slowly, you know, we we were almost like a typical cover band, you know, playing all styles of music, but we excelled in the African stuff and people seemed to enjoy that more. And as it turns out, the gig in the coast was cancelled, but we got, we started getting really busy in Nairobi. We decided to special in, specialize in East African rumba, Congolese rumba, and, you know, kind of reviving and regrowing that sound and doing it in a big band style. So hence Orchestra Masika Africa. So at one point, you know, we were a 15 piece band 
We would play regularly around Nairobi four or five times a week. And yeah, we did our debut album with Kettable Music in 2016. Uh, and then after that, we got very busy. And then we did our last album in 2019. That's really cool that you kept this music alive. And through Serendipity, if I may call it, brought you together with like-minded individuals and you formed your band. So guys, here is Dunia Nimoja by Shama and his band Orchestra Masika Africa. Oh, 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 
those of you who are just joining us right now, this is the show Kenyan Artist with your host, Jane Apondo. And our guest of the day is none other than the charismatic Asian British rumba star Shama. And we were just discussing how he got into this genre of music. So, you and your band did a cover for the song Pesa Position, which you performed at Jay's Fresh Bar and Kitchen, a location that was known to bring people interested in music, art, culture, and the creative industry together. Why did you choose to perform? Form this particular song. Yes, so the video of Pesa Position at Jay's, the one which I believe you're talking about, is was actually from our album launch, the second album we released, which was called um, Dunia Ni Moja. And so we used to play a lot at Jay's. We used to play them at least once or twice a year, do a big Thursday night show, which was put on by Roots International. Um, and a shout out to Rashid because, you know, he was one of the, he is one of the best music promoters in, in Nairobi, in Kenya. And he's trying to, you know, revive proper music. But yeah, so Pesa Position was almost like, it was a tribute to Franco, who, who was a great inspiration to me um, and to our band, to the, the kind of aesthetic we had, sonic aesthetic we had. And it's, a, of course, a song which is known, maybe not that well known, but... Um, yeah, we used to play that song as part of our repertoire. We used to play it very well. Um, we arranged it in our own way, but kept the soul of Franco alive. And so we, we used to play a lot of Franco songs, of course, le- lots of Les Wanika songs and so on. But yeah, for that show, we decided to put in a few covers apart from our album. And that was one of the songs we decided to choose. I can't help but notice that you look quite young in an industry which is associated with people who are much older. And um, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? And how does that make you feel? <laughs> it's it's interesting you say that because I get, I get it quite a lot. So I'm actually, I've just turned 25 years old. Um, and yeah, of course, this industry, especially rumba music and world music is associated with old people, or mainly old men. And, you know, maybe that's part of the problem, especially in Kenya, because the music has kind of stopped with that generation. And younger generations are struggling to, you know, keep it going. And so, yeah, when I when I started Masika Africa, I was actually, when I was the band leader, I founded it when I was 18 years old. At, <clears throat> and I did that till I was 22. And it is interesting as much as, I think because rumba, rumba music and African traditional music is very deep, it takes a long time to master. And of course, I'm, I've been lucky that I've been around great musicians, uh, great musicians who are much older than me. So they've always, you know, kind of taught me on the way. And so, yeah, as much as I look young, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> I've been around old people, so maybe my soul is quite old. Having all those accomplishments at your age, yeah, you must be an old soul. And uh, around March last year, you released a single named Dunia Yaharaka. Could you tell me a little bit about this song and what inspired you to write it? Dunia Yaharaka was released in the lockdown, while the London lockdown, the UK lockdown. And, you know, I was using the time to kind of improve my songwriting skills, my production skills and so on. And so that was the first single I released in a series of singles. And basically it was, you know, what inspired the song was basically seeing the difference in the pace of life. Of course, in Kenya, life is very slow. People have time for each other. They have time to, you know, listen to music and relax as much as everyone is hustling to find what they want. But in the Western world, in London in particular, you know, life moves very fast. And so, you know, you could be playing music, you could be doing whatever you do. And people are not even paying attention because they're running around, they're running the rat race. And so I decided to write that song, a simple song, and record it myself, arrange it myself. And yeah, that was basically it. And so I released some more songs in that style. Yeah, I guess COVID really got us to slow down and focus on the things that matter. So guys, here is a single, Dunia Ya Haraka. Dunia ya leo huenda mbio sana Na watu kweli hawana nafasi Hakuna yule anataka kusubiri Hakuna yule anataka kufurai Masa hasasa ya mekua ni pesa Na sisi tuko kama watu mwa Kuki 
And what I love about your music is that it has depth and meaning, something which is dying in our fast-paced culture. And you also come off as a person who likes to break boundaries and challenge stereotypes. Let me ask you, what inspires you to do what you do every day? Yes, I think it's very important to break boundaries and challenge stereotypes. Because otherwise, you know, we, we get stuck in our old habits or we just, you know, inherit bad patterns from the people who came before us. And so... I think I have I have that in my personality. I consider myself a disruptor. So growing up, you know, we had to I had to fight to do what I wanted to do. And because now I'm succeeding, you know, it changes other people's mindsets. It forges the path for younger people who want to do the same thing, especially breaking out of the toxic cycles which our communities and societies are stuck in. And so for me, in regards to music, like what inspires me to do it every day is the fact that there is nothing else I can do. Like I know for a fact, if it wasn't for music, I wouldn't be here right now. Wow, that's really profound. I can see now why you're so passionate about music and leaving a mark in society. So who are some of your favorite artists as far as rumba is concerned? I find it really difficult to choose like a favorite artist, you know, or a favorite song or anything, because it, it changes on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, depending on my mood. But when I look at like rumba music, for example, everyone is so different. So, you know, Franco has his own sound and style of doing things, what he would sing about. Uh, Taboule is different. Um, and of course, you know, if you look at the different generations of that music, so, you, you know, you have that first, second generation. Uh, you come into the later stuff like, you know, Zaiko, I love Zaiko Langa Langa. Come into the fourth generation, you know, you have people like Wenge, Kofi, you have the guys in East Africa from the, you know, Orchestra, Ma- Orchestra Makassi, Mbaraka Mwinshehe. So it's, it's, it's really hard to choose, to choose a favorite. But as I say, a lot of these people are also people of the past. There's very few people um, at the moment that I know of who are doing very, very great things, you know, which are on par with what came before. Uh, in that sense, at least London is a bit better. There's some of the bands which I work with or some of the musicians I work with, you know, they really inspire me and they are actually now some of my favorite bands. So, for example, the the band leader for Matandology, one of the bands I work in, has a Congolese band called Congo Diantotila, which is a fantastic band. They fuse uh, seven, rumba and jazz. Um, one of the bands I work in, Grupo Lokito, fuses rumba and um, Latin music, so salsa and stuff. And so that's really great as well. And it's nice because they're contemporary bands and not just something from the past. I like that you recognize the pioneers of rumba as well as a more contemporary artist. It's also pretty cool that some of your favorite artists are people that you've actually worked with. And I think that we are our best critics. So if you love it, then I can see why a lot of people resonate with it. 
What is it like being an Asian rumba artist in London? Have you had any performances? And if so, what was the response like? So one of the things that I love about London is that people don't see Asian musician or Asian guy playing rumba or so on like they do in Nairobi or in Kenya. And, you know, it was one of the reasons which made me leave because people liked me, of course, but I didn't know whether they liked me because I was a good musician or because it was just like a spectacle, you know, like, let's go see this Indian guy playing rumba. Um, so in that way, you know, London, they don't care what you look like, where you're from, you know, people are just people. And yeah, so since I moved to London, I was lucky that when I moved to London, I had moved with some job opportunities and I had a network and community. And so it was very easy to find work. Um, and right now I'm playing with about six or seven different bands. I do my own music. I write and arrange for a lot of other musicians and labels. And so we perform quite regularly in London, about like anywhere from two to five times a week. Uh, we've done big festivals in the UK, you know, we tour quite regularly. And the response is great. The response is actually much better than what we find in Kenya, because I think people there appreciate music a lot more. Uh, they're more open, you know, I find, I find Kenyans are quite shy. They have to drink quite a bit before they start dancing. Whereas, you know, over there, people are on their feet before you begin. You heard it, guys. You need to stop being so shy and hit the dance floor before the drinks kick in. So how would you describe the kind of music that you create? So the kind of music I create, um, it's quite interesting because I've spent a lot of the last five years, especially, trying to find my own sound. And I think, you know, I'm getting closer. But basically, it's a sound which is... Um, of course, Swahili rumba, because my main language which I write in is Kiswahili. But it's firmly rooted in old school music. So, you know, like the Franco generation, uh, as I call Langa Langa. So it's not, the sound is still very old school, it's very raw, it's not a modern sound. Um, and so, and, and that's something I pride myself in, you know, retaining the musicianship and not just, you know, falling back on production shortcuts and so on. So it's, it's live music, it's high energy, you know, the purpose of, of African music is to dance. And so, you know, that's one of the main things to keep, you know, the skills in the guitar, but keep the groove, which makes people dance. And of course, lyric wise, it's uh, socially conscious music. So, you know, it's very easy to just sing about anything, but, you know, there's meaning behind the songs that I want to write. You released a song called Nyumbani. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So um, the song Nyumbani was part of the series of singles which I was doing, and it was more to test my production abilities. And it was also as part of an experiment to see how I can modernize rumba music and, you know, bring it into a more modern context. Um, of course, the song, the lyrics talk, they speak for themselves. But it is also something that I released quite a long time ago. It's something that, of course, as most artists, I'm not proud of anymore. And so I'm working on a new album that I'll talk about a bit later. And that's more of like, you know, a traditional sound like you can hear with the Masika Africa stuff. All right. So the next song we're going to play is Kazi by Shama, which is another sensational song talking about the realities of life. Ni 
Niko na kazi ya kufanya Na keie Niko na kazi ya kufanya Ninaenda Niko na kazi ya kufanya Just in case you're joining us right now, this is the show Kenyan Artist with your host Jane Apondo. And our guest today is a musician, instrumentalist, producer, music teacher and rumba star, Shama. And we were just talking about the reception of his music in London. So you finally came back to Nairobi after being away for nearly two years. How does it feel to be back? And what are some of the things that you missed about Nairobi? So yeah, it's been uh, two years since I was lost in Nairobi. And of course, because of the COVID lockdown and so on. Um, And I'm actually just visiting, so I've not moved back to Nairobi. I'm just here for another week and then I'll be back in London. Um, And yeah, it's it's good to be back, especially because of, um, you know, we grew up here and this is my home. So all my friends, family are here. A big part of my life is here. But of course, I don't feel like I can live here anymore. So, of course, you miss the weather, you miss the food, you miss the people. And, you know, people are very nice and friendly. And in music, it's quite easy to get things done because people have more time and life isn't as expensive. But at the same time, you know, um, there's a lot of things about London that I miss. London I, I is my home and I have a community there and I have a lot of good jobs there. So, yeah, I hope to be visiting regularly and doing projects here with local musicians. What is the name of the song you did around August 2020? It was a fusion track of old school Congolese rumba and Kenyan Benga with lyrics both in Kiswahili and Lingala. So one of the jobs I do in London, or possibly the main job, is as a session musician, which means I play guitar or I sing for on people's tracks or as a performer for other people, other musicians. And so some of the musicians I collaborate with are a UK-based duo. They're producers and DJs called Village Cuts. And actually they were in Kenya quite recently working with the Bengatronics label to get some Kenyan music done. And they're quite interesting because they fuse EDM and house music and party music, club music with old school African and Latin songs or sounds. And I think they do really well in exposing, you know, the different cultures, but in a modern context, which can be played in nightclubs and so on. So they're good friends of mine and they, you know, they suggested, let's do a, let's do a track together. And it's called By Skelly. And actually they got uh, Orchestra Les Mangelepa, the three vocalists, to sing on top of it. So it was a three-way collaboration between me, Village Cuts and Mangelepa. And, you know, of course, uh, for, for me, it was quite an honor because they're singing about me. They say, you know, Jamrock, Lindanda. But or more so because, you know, we used to, of course, we've performed together with them, but we used to play their songs as covers. And so they're kind of heroes to us. It's really cool how you can fuse different genres to appeal to different audiences without necessarily losing your sound. Tell me, what was the inspiration behind this song? So, yeah, the inspiration for By Skelly was... It was more of, let me say, an experiment. So uh, they sent me a track, I played over it, added the guitars, the bass and so on. And then, you know, we sent it over to Nairobi and let the the three guys from Mangelepa do what they wanted. And yeah, so it's basically, it's just a dance track. Um, It's mixes Swahili, Lingala. It is more Benga than Rumba. But yeah, it was literally, it was just all about the collaboration to see what happens. And it was, it's really great to, you know, immortalize these three guys and bring them to a new generation and a new audience, especially this late in their career. And yeah, so as I said, the lyrics, it was just kind of, you know, come, let's dance, let's have fun. Uh, singing about me playing guitar, basically. 
I must say, you are an impeccable guitarist and vocalist. Have you had any uh, professional training in music? Thank you for the compliment. Um, I guess, no, I've, I've been very lucky that as a guitarist, especially in the last few years, and as a vocalist, like, I've been around very, very good musicians. So, you know, some of the people we play with were, like, the biggest stars from Congo and Latin America. And so, you know, when you play with people of that caliber, it improves you as a musician. Um, before that, yeah, I've had professional training in music. So... As I said, our school was very musical, so we were taught classically. Um, I used to play piano, drums, uh, percussion, trumpet, flute, of course, guitar, and we used to sing and so on. And so, yeah, we're, I am a schooled musician. I, I read music, I understand music, I write music, and so I'm able to teach music. But I think, you know, it's not something that's necessary. It's something that it is very important, but, you know, the main thing is also the ear and this, the culture and the tradition. You know, African music is taught by ear as well. So most of the stuff I've done in rumba or in African music, Latin music was done orally and not through, you know, traditional way of doing it. So you sing and play six instruments. Talk about setting the bar so high. Anyway, what are some of the highlights of your musical career? At this point, like, I've had so many highlights in my career of course the biggest thing is that I feel like you know music is a is a journey and I'm moving in the right direction and it's been incredible to you know collaborate with some of the people who used to be my heroes so you know when I was young my parents are from the coast they would play you know their mushrooms and all of these kind of you know old school musicians on the radio you hear Mangele Pa and so on and you know now I'm, I'm writing music with these people I play with these people I'm sharing stages with these people and so almost, you know, every show we've done around the world, you know, whether it's in Nairobi, Cuba, UK, it's, you know, every every show, every project has been incredible. And so, yeah, every every day is almost a highlight of the career. Okay, so you're practically living the dream. We get it. If there was a message of encouragement that you could give to our listeners, who are perhaps aspiring artists, what would you say to them? A message of encouragement... There's quite a few I can say, but the main thing is, you know, know why you do what you do. Because music is probably one of the most difficult jobs on the planet, emotionally, mentally. Um, it's very competitive. It's very ruthless. And it, there's a big difference between, you know, enjoying music and being a professional musician. So if you're an artist or you're an aspiring musician, you know, know why it is you do what you do and know what you want to get out of it because not everyone will be a superstar and you know not everyone is in it for the same reason there are people who want to be famous there are people who want to be rich and those are all different industries um, but the main thing is you know as for kenyan musicians i'd say you know we have a wealth of culture and nairobi used to be one of the biggest hubs for african music for many decades so you know look back home we keep on looking to the west and you know, all the all the radios are full of Western music. Uh, we as musicians think Western musicians and Western music is superior, but African music is now in the spotlight and it's still growing. So if you want to succeed, you need to find your own voice. And, you know, of course, look back at our own culture and you'll find it there. You heard it, guys. Understand the motivation behind why you're doing what you're doing and just embrace who you are as well as your culture. Tell me, what are your immediate plans as far as music is concerned? Are you working on any projects? Should you look out for any new music are you having any performances coming soon so at the moment i'm working on many projects with many great musicians in london we have a my main band is called grupo loquito which is the you know congolese latin fusion band and we're about to release a new album which we've been working on for the last two years so that's going to be really good uh, another big project i work with is called matondology with mulele matondo and we've just been in the studio we've got some great singles coming out there's another musician i work with called leah and the sunflowers we have have some singles coming out and of course my main personal project as Shama is my debut solo album so for the past few months I've been writing songs making demos and I'm gonna be in the studio in the next few months so I will have an album coming out uh, at some point this year um, of course if you're in London I have many shows many performances lined up which you can find on my social media and of course I'm still in Nairobi till the 20th so in that point in this few days I'm gonna organize another show so if you want to come and watch, look out on my social media and you'll find it there. So lots of things in store for you guys. Keep your ears and eyes open to see what Sharma will be doing, where he will be performing at. And uh, how can we find you on social media? What platforms can we listen to your music from? So yeah, as I said, if you want to find me, um, Instagram is my main platform at Shama the Musician. That's S-H-A-M-A, -A, the Musician. You can also find my Facebook page and my YouTube channel uh of course you can find 
my own music on the Shama on Spotify, you know, Apple Music, all the other platforms. Also, my older songs as Shamsha. And of course, you can find the bands I work with, Grupo Lokito, Matondology, Leia and the Sunflowers, and many more. Of course, have a look. If you like what you see, give it a like. So you heard it, guys. You can find him on Instagram at Sharma the Musician. He's also on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music under Sharma, and his older music under Sham Shah. That's S H Y A M S H A H. As for me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Jane Opondo. That's J A Y N E O P O N D O. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of this amazing and interaction with Sharma, the musical and rumba genius. But before we leave, I'm going to play you his song, Ndio Nifike. Naona wengi, wame kuisha fika e, wakona nyumba, bibi na magari. Sina kitu oh, Inga wakazi Nimefanya Sina kitu Ya kuonyesha Bona kazi ya mkono wangu Haina thamani yeah, yeah. Mimi simbaya Siwezi kuwa Sitaki ku mama lakini duniani wabaya wamefaulu Nimekwisha potea Inafaa kufanya nini Ndiyo nifike Nimekwisha soma Ea kutosha o oh. Inafaa kufanya nini Ndiyo nifike Kazi ni na yo Lakini pesa hakuna Inafaa kufanya nini Ndiyo nifike Sitaki kuiba Ndiyo nifike Sitaki kuwa Ndiyo nifike Sitaki kuuza Roho yangu Abo, 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 haya Abo, 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 abo Thank you so much for taking your time to share your musical life, journey and experiences with us. And from KBC and the Kenyan Artist, we're wishing you all the very best in your music and lots of success this 2022. Thanks for having me on the show and hopefully I'll be back again very soon. But yeah, make sure you check out the music, make sure you come for a show. Thanks. Dear listener, we come to the end of the program. On behalf of all those who participated today, of course, Lewis Mutua on the controls. Our guests there, not forgetting General Pondo too. I'm John Obongo. Bye for now and take care.
Kenya's music icons. My name is Fashle Mamburi from Kenya. John Katana is my name, band leader, Them Mushrooms. Hi, my name is Eric Wainaina, and you're listening to KBC English Service. Hi, I'm Fito Dera, and you're listening to Kenyan Artist, right here on KBC. What's up, this is Nameless. And this is Wahoo, and we are the, the M's. The M's, baby. This is Awilo Mike of Jamnazi Africa Band on Kenyan Artists on KBC. Hey, what's going on, people? This is Wyatt the Lion. I'm hanging out with Jonah Bongo Jr. on the Kenyan Artist Show. Keep it right here, KBC English Service. Live to that. Respect. From Benga to Rumba, Kapuka to Genge, Gospel to Afrofusion, Jonah Bongo Jr. speaks to the most influential Kenyan artists on KBC English Service.